Hey there, Clashers, and welcome back to another episode of Gaming with Willie. Today I want to bring you the war recap for the war against Pinoy Warrior Jr. Now this war was somewhat close. There was an excellent effort by both sides. Now we're going to start off by looking at a Govalo that Flintstone did against their number 10. He's going to start by dropping off his four earthquake spells there on the south side of the base. And get that nice path straight into the core for the Valkyries. So that they can get in there and take care of that air defense as quickly as possible. And the wizards are on the sides here making his funnel. And he gets that wall open there. He's got a straight path now. Once those buildings go down, the Valkyries and King can go straight to the core. Max Valk's coming out of the clan castle, and he's got three of his own Valkyries. He'll spell down as a Max Dragon comes out of the enemy clan castle. The wizards are going to get that taken care of. He goes ahead and starts dropping his balloons. Probably a bit premature here, but the air defenses are going down. So he's not going to lose too many balloons to the air defense. And down goes the last air defense. And he drops a heal there to keep those balloons up. The Valkyries have the core cleaned out. And the Golem is tanking for the Wizards there. Now there are no more defenses left that can target the balloons. So they're going to take out the rest of these cannons here. And the rest of this is just a matter of cleanup. He still has Valkyries and his King. Uh, some Wizards and plenty of balloons. So he has more than enough cleanup troops on this attack. And a very nice 3 star here by Flintstone. Here we've got Flintstone again hitting another base that has pretty much centralized air defenses. And so he's bringing the same army comp composition. He's coming in from the top there. He's got the quakes opened up. A nice straight path again. Right down through the core. They'll get that first air defense taken down pretty quickly. And then move on in to the town hall. Wizards made a nice wide funnel at the top there. So everything goes straight in as planned. The Valkyries move in. And wizards come out of this clan castle. The heal spell to keep everything alive. The Valkyries are going to deal with those wizards pretty quickly. Get them down before they can do much damage. And the air defenses are just about down. There goes the last one. The balloons are moving in from the bottom here. Get that wizard tower taken care of. Now they're working on the rest of the defenses on the bottom. He's got to heal down to keep up those balloons while they target that uh, wizard tower. Just a couple more defenses left, and the rest is history here. It's got Valkyries up for cleanup. Uh, some balloons left, but the skeletons are working on them. And a little golemite up here, beating on that storage. The balloons have been taken down, but the three max Valkyries out of the clan castle are going to finish up this cleanup on their own. They continue to work their way, just smashing all these buildings. They beat their way through that wall, and it's another nice three-star. Now, I'm coming at this base with uh, Govaho. I send in a hog there to get that Max Dragon out of the clan castle and pull those on over to the edge of the base. I'll use a poison and a few troops to get them taken care of. Alright, the dragon's down. I go ahead and drop my golems and a couple more wizards to get my funnel started. There we go, a nice wide funnel. Wall breakers will get that outside wall opened up for me. And I got everything going straight into the core now. The bowler out of the clan castle is going to take a bit of a walk. Heal spell and jump spells down. And the Valkyries are going to make short work of everything in the core there. 
The queen's walking with the bowler up here. The bowler's about to go down. I'm bringing in the hog riders on the edges here. As you can see, there's there aren't a whole lot of spots on the inside of the base for giant bombs. Especially not double giant bombs. You can see one went off here. I'm losing a bunch of hog riders at the top. There's another giant bomb. Drop that heel there just to make sure those Valkyries stay up for the rest of this raid. I've got a little chunk of defenses left down here at the bottom. Losing some hogs to spring traps and the last of the hogs are going to go down. Wizards work on the outside with the Valkyries. And the golem's going to distract these defenses while everything makes its way down through the rest of this base here. The golem's still up, taking a lot of fire from the cannon and archer tower. The cannon on the left is targeting the Valkyries, but too little too late on that one for the cannon. And we wrap up another three star on this Town Hall 9. Here we have a Town Hall 8 reaching up to hit a Town Hall 9. And as you can see, he's just bringing straight mass Valkyries. And the reason this works out is because the base layout is so wide open. Uh, usually, if you're going to have a base set up to defend against Valkyries, you want to have more compartments so that they're spending more time beating on walls. On a base like this, they're going to spend virtually no time on the walls. Because he's got the four earthquakes and he's got the wall breaker, so they don't need to hit the walls at all. He's just going to send a whole bunch of Valkyries in and they'll run through the base. Some more Valkyries in the clan castle at level three. Looks like he didn't quite draw out all the wizards, but it's not going to matter for the Valkyries. Uh, the Valkyries make short work of any ground troop that comes out of the clan castle. So usually when I do the Valkyrie attacks and I know there's ground troops in the clan castle, I don't even bother try to draw them out. Because I know they go to that troop quickly and they start swinging as soon as they get there. So you can see he's got some in the core, which are going down actually. And he's got a big group of Valkyries up here working clockwise, clockwise around the base. He had a couple of Valkyries survive the core and they're working their way around the other side of the base, but the queen's going to take them out. Still a whole lot of Valkyries left, and the king's up with some barbarians. And just two defenses at this point. Once they get through that storage, they're basically home free. Mortars down. And it's just the archer tower left. And it's going to go down in just a second. Now just a few buildings for cleanup. Now they do need to make their way. Not quite sure why they decided to go through the wall instead of around it, but eh, whatever works. Now I know I haven't been showing any attacks from down here, but that's mostly because it's pretty much all dragon attacks. And you guys know how those are. It's kind of the same thing. You've seen one dragon attack, you've seen all of the dragon attacks. I know that's not quite true the higher up you go, but we don't really use dragons up high. Now here's another base I hit with uh, my lower Town Hall 9 account. And on this one, since he has centralized air defenses and grounded expos, I wanted to go for uh, a... Golem, Valkyrie, and Baby Dragon attack. And I don't know if you noticed there, but... Like I said before, I did not bother to draw out the Clan Castle troops. I already knew they were going to be ground troops, and I knew that the Valkyries would take care of them. But the funnel worked out perfectly here. Every All of the Valkyries went straight into the core and got those air defenses taken out really quickly. So I was able to drop my Baby Dragons here pretty early on. And that helps take care of a lot of these defenses that are around the outside that you see. Didn't really have a reason to drop those wall breakers in. 
I did know that giant bomb was there, so I had a heal down in anticipation. Wasn't quite sure which way the Valks were going to go after they hit it. But I got them healed back up nicely. And they're going to keep working their way around the base. I've still got two baby dragons up. Yeah. And they're making their way through. This one's taking fire from a Tezza and still doing plenty of damage. See if it gets that one down. Nope, not quite. One baby dragon and he got smoked by the Seeking Air Mine. That's alright, a big group of Valkyries are coming in to make short work of the rest of this base. Make their way through that wall pretty quickly. Get that dangerous Tesla down. Maybe. <laughs> Once they get their way through the storages. And down goes the cannon. I honestly don't think the cannons have done much to uh, impact my ground attacks. If they have done anything, I haven't noticed it. I'm getting the last of these structures down. And wrap up another three star for the Crimson Fog. Here's an attack from our newest member of the clan, Orca. You see, he's got a, a Goho attack trained up. 23 Hog Riders. Plus a... Uh, Two golems, one max golem in the clan castle. And just a couple of wizards and valkyries to make up his kill squad. But he's going to get that queen taken out. And he's going to get the clan castle taken out. So two big things when you're doing the hog rider attacks. I don't remember if he gets any uh, giant bombs triggered. Yeah, he's got one triggered there. And he's just kind of... Dropping the hogs in there along that whole side. And they'll make their way through pretty much unscathed. You can see there aren't really a lot of spots for double giant bomb. There's Tesla farms by the wizard towers. A lot of skeleton traps have popped. And that can be a bit of a problem when you're doing your hog rider attacks. Especially when you have that many skeletons on your hogs. But they're going to keep on making their way through. They found a bomb there, but the heal has dropped quickly. Still a lot of hogs, though. Considering how many skeletons there were. They're getting through that last defense there. And all he has left are hog riders, but he's got way more than enough to get the cleanup done. He does have one wizard up here. Oh, and a giant. And Orca wraps up a very nice three star. Loki is back in the wars. He's been sitting out for a little while while he works on various upgrades. He's going to come at this base with 27 hog riders. And I believe he has a max golem in the clan castle as well. He's got a, a wizard there working on some outside structures. I believe that's where he's uh, sending in his kill squad. Yeah. So he's working on a pretty big funnel there. There go the other wizards to get this side of the funnel. A couple of wall breakers to get things going in the right direction. The king's going to change targets over to that queen in a second. There he goes. And he's going to get the clan castle troops drawn out and taken care of. Here come the clan castle troops. More wizards and archers. And a poison down on them as well. And that poison is going to do most of the work in getting them taken care of. Now he's triggered one giant bomb with the king. The hog riders are coming in around the top. Being chased by the enemy king there. He's got another giant bomb triggered. Just one though and that heal gets those hogs right back up to full health. A lot of skeleton traps again. And it looks like he's got another giant bomb trigger. That's three out of four. And now that's all the defenses. So now it's just cleanup. He's still got his queen at full health with her ability. 
as soon as she's done firing at this wall, she'll go up and take out the clan castle. The hogs are all in one big group making their way around the base. It's got wizards and minions at the top here doing clean up. And then I'll wrap up another three star for Crimson Fog. And those were the highlight attacks for Crimson Fog in this war. Uh, shout out to Pinoy Warriors. They put up a heck of a fight. It came down to the last few hours of war. We finally pulled out in front of them and they didn't really have any more attacks left to catch up. Uh, we almost got the perfect war. We were one star shy. Orca ended up getting a 93% two star on their number one. And everything else, of course, was three starred. I do enjoy wars like this where the competition is tough. Now, we finished up another war after that one that brought Crimson Fog up to 100 wins. 100 wars won. Now, after Pinoy Warrior Jr., we faced this clan, which falls more under the category of not so difficult uh, they didn't really put up much of a fight so that was a an easy w for our records as you can see they failed to three star any of our town hall nines and we got most of the stars i think we missed a few a few town hall nines that we probably should have had another good war for us the current war however is going to be another challenging war for us. Maybe even more so than the level 10 clan. I know clan level doesn't mean anything as far as competitiveness. But what does mean something is a green warlock. Which is exactly what these guys have. Look at all of this green. <laughs> these guys are on a 15 war win streak right now. And they have a total of 5 losses throughout their entire Warlog right now. And only 48 total losses out of 220 wins. So this will be a very exciting war. Very challenging. Battle day for that starts in 17 hours, so it'll be later tomorrow evening. Looking forward to that one. Good luck to you guys, if you are watching. And that's going to wrap it up for this war recap, guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more Clash content from me, as always, be sure to click that subscribe button. Is your clan on a, on a good win streak right now? If they are, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you all next time.